Blythe, situated on the northeast coast of England, placed conveniently for the North Sea oil fields and the major Northern European and Scandinavian ports. Blythe has found itself to be ideally placed to deal with shipping from all these sources and many more. Further, it has the advantage over more northerly ports that it has superb transport links with the rest of the country, London just three hours away by rail or five by road. The harbour itself offers deep water available at all stages of the tide and a variety of cranage which can handle a wide range of commodities. Storo and Roro facilities exist, which are extensively used, particularly for the handling of forest products at Wimborne Quay and the South Harbour. But the main attraction of the port is the way it operates. The business of the port grew up around the coal shipping industry, but with the recent decline in coal shipments from the area, the port has been on its mettle to seek out new markets and commodities to handle. This has been done with skill and flair, under the eye of a management team which has a penetrating knowledge of the business and an unquenchable enthusiasm for the success of the port and the surrounding area. Keen to ensure that cargoes are handled with maximum speed and minimum fuss, yet maintaining good cargo care, the administration of the port is streamlined and up to the minute. Computerization of all stages of the processing of a shipment is a key feature here, and the port is in the reassuring position of being responsible for the cargoes, not just until they've left the port, but until they are safely delivered to their final destinations. Actually, I've got an urgent load to go to Chamberlain Phipps at West Auckland this afternoon. Can we do it, please? Yes, there's no problem there, Barbara. Could uh, you give me the marks and the details, please? Over. with its customers too, helping them towards their business objectives. The port is large enough to have the skills and resources necessary for expansion, and yet small and determined enough to react swiftly to customers' requirements. Indeed, the Charlton Leslie offshore supply base was in operation two months after detailed discussions commenced. Other facilities are keeping pace with the expansion of the port's activities. 1986 saw the inauguration of the new office complex, where the potential requirements of customers are catered for by the provision of extra office accommodation. With its history of specialist bulk cargo handling, the port has developed significantly in this field. Handling terminals are currently available for a variety of commodities, coal, grain and alumina to name but three. Space is available for more specialised terminals and there is also plenty of space on site for companies to establish permanent bases. The port has general development powers and planning matters can be dealt with quickly. Coal is still a substantial part of the business and this is loaded from high level stades or from ground level via hoppers then belt conveyors to the ship. One of the port's major customers, the CEGB, has recently built three 20,000-ton vessels. These are regular visitors to the coal terminal and can be fully loaded and dispatched within two days. The coal stays are served directly from railway links. As part of the plan to diversify activities, the coaling facilities are capable of handling a variety of other commodities and are connected with British Railway's main line services. Raw materials for the manufacture of aluminium are handled at the Alcan terminal on the north side of the river. The terminal serves the smelting plant at Linemouth, some five miles further up the coast, and is connected directly by a mineral line railway. The port enables Alcan to transport both raw materials and products speedily and efficiently, a cost-effective link with the world's commodities markets. Grain is another commodity handled by the port. Granfin has established a terminal in the upper harbour, consisting of a plant to store, process, dry and ship grain in bulk.
The South Harbour has facilities to handle containers and trailers, with craneage ranging from 5 to 30 tonnes capacity and modern warehousing and storage facilities adjacent. The port is attracting increasing interest from the North Sea oil and gas companies. The British Gas Subsea Engineering Unit at Blythe carries out research for operations in the demanding riggers of the North Sea. The supply ships are becoming a welcome sight and the authority is keen to develop this interest still further. Blythe's central location makes it attractive to busy personnel. As well as good road and rail connections with the capital and the rest of the country, just about 10 miles away is the region's premier airport, with regular scheduled flights to London and the European mainland. As well as these attractions, the Port Authority continually updates its operational planning to ensure service is tailored to exact requirements. Wimborne Quay is the site of the Forest Products Terminal. Here, extensive modern storage facilities exist to serve the Storo platform, with a capacity for 30,000 tonnes of forest products at any one time. Wimborne Quay is one of the most modern facilities for handling and storage in the UK. Cranage is available, but the main traffic is Storo or Roro, with up to 5,000 tonnes of paper reels being offloaded in a normal eight-hour shift. Wimborne Quay is currently the port's showpiece, but the authority is keen to show that the handling of any cargo can be brought to a similar fine art. The Port of Blythe. More than just a small port in the northeast of England, it's a thoroughly modern organisation, eager to forge new business links, enthusiastic over new projects and proposals, quick to respond to new initiatives in a positive and constructive way, keen to be involved in anything shipshape.